In this lesson, we will look at the details of the axillary artery and its branches as it traverses the axilla. Here we have an anterior view of the right shoulder area, and we see some elements of the axial skeleton as well, which is helpful in order to understand the axillary artery. Let's convert this into a simple line drawing. And we have the scapula and the humerus in place, along with the first rib and the sternum. A very important muscle to understand the axillary artery is the pectoralis minor muscle, which is shown here. Note the first rib is in its position, as shown here. The pectoralis minor muscle is attached to the coracoid process here, and then it extends onto some of the upper ribs on the chest wall. In order to understand the axillary artery, I'm going to remove most of the pectoralis minor muscle, leaving only a small portion of it, which is the portion attached to the coracoid process, just to keep ourselves oriented. The axillary artery traverses through the axilla in a course like this. This artery is actually called the subclavian artery, more proximally, uh, in the area of the root of the neck. And as the subclavian artery crosses over or superior to the first rib, at that point of the lateral or outer border of the first rib, its name changes to the axillary artery. The axillary artery continues through the axilla, and later on it changes its name once again to the brachial artery. And this name change also occurs at a very specific location, and to understand that we will put the muscle in place, which is the teres major muscle. This muscle has an attachment from the scapula to the anterior part of the humerus, and at the inferior border of the teres major muscle, the name of the axillary artery changes to the brachial artery. Now the axillary artery is subdivided into three segments. And in order to understand that, remember the pectoralis minor muscle that we removed. We'll put back just simple line dashed, dashed lines in order to identify the outline of the pectoralis minor muscle. And the axillary artery is now divided into three parts that are simply called the first part, the second part, and the third part. And these three parts have very characteristic relationship to the pectoralis minor muscle. The first part is proximal to the pectoralis minor. The second part is posterior or deep to the pectoralis minor. And the third part is distal to the pectoralis minor muscle. There are branches from each part of the axillary artery, but I'm only going to highlight a few branches from the third part, branches that have the highest level of clinical significance. One of those branches is known as the subscapular artery, and it is seen here coming out from the third part. And it has further subdivisions that go to the scapular area as well as more distally into the chest wall area. There's another branch from the same third part of the axillary artery that, are, that is known as the circumflex humeral artery. In fact, there are two. There's a posterior circumflex artery and there is an anterior circumflex artery. And these two arteries anastomose around the surgical neck of the humerus. So this is the posterior circumflex, this is the anterior circumflex, and these two then anastomose around that surgical neck of the humerus. These are important uh, branches from the axillary artery that have clinical significance. It is also important to keep in mind that the branches from the subscapular artery that go to the scapula participate in a very important anastomosis around the scapula, known as the scapular anastomosis and the anastomose with branches that are coming from the proximal part of the subclavian artery. And this is an important anastomosis because it allows the blood flow to continue 
from the more proximal arteries into the distal part of the upper limb, even if the axillary artery is blocked or ligated. And this is an example of a very clinically useful anastomosis.